Welcome to Raw TV, Real and Willing Television. I'm Amanda Button. And I'm Taylor Wilkerson. Tonight's episode is called... Nope, I'm, I'm not going to say I'll that. I'll say it. It's What the Flock. What the heck? You can't say that. Yeah, I can. No, it's you what can't. The flock. What the... Oh, Flock. flock. Yeah. F-L-O-C-K. What the... What does that mean? It means we're going to be talking about which flock do we follow? Do we follow society? Do we follow Jesus's flock? Cool. Yeah. So, I thought that would be so, a cool, yeah. good show. That's what we're going to be talking right. about, so awesome. make sure you stay tuned. So today we are going to be talking about what the flock, <laughs> what <laughs> flock do we follow as Christians? So what are some of the things that you guys do, we do, um, that we get from pop culture or the culture around us? Wow. Yeah. I don't know. Like when I came to Southeastern, uh -huh. my taste in music completely changed. Yeah. Like I always had my style of music that I liked. And then I came here to school and like everyone listened to a different kind. So what did I do? Started listening to the music that my friends listen to. Yeah. So totally, totally followed culture. Do you actually one. like it though? Um. Yeah, I like your music. Okay. <laughs> your music. <laughs> oh, you guys are roommates, right? Yeah. That's probably what it is. Okay. <laughs> I think I think a lot of us we follow like clothing trends. Yeah. Like this isn't necessarily. You guys all copy me. Yeah, I just copy what I Taylor looks like. I, I wake lie. up in the morning and I text Taylor and I go, Hey, send me a picture of you so I know what to look like today. That's weird. Well, I, I mean, it's the flaw. But it, I knew. I what I did. I definitely got on the Sperry boat. Like you know, I. I saw Sperry's Blue got addicted yeah. to it. Sperry you get it, right? That was really clever. Thank you. I was cute. But yeah, I got on that. That was like, so definitely fashion. I would say fashion has fashion, a big thing. Big thing, yeah. pop culture. I think that's a big thing for all of us. We all kind of big time. do fashion. Yeah. What about like media in your personal lives? Did you, do you actually want to have an Instagram and a Twitter? Or do you like do it because everybody else has one and oh, you feel out of the it. loop? Me does. I love Twitter. Me I, mean, I like Instagram. I like, I like Instagram. Instagram. You love it because you got like 14 like million followers. No, not 14 million. Okay, really 15 million. 12. 12 million. Okay. You do okay. not. Million? You do no. not. Oh, oh my god. god. I was so very, jealous. He's not cool unless he has a blue check, y'all. Relax. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, like, I don't even use Twitter. I just got it because people had it. Yeah. It's really I'm not a huge fan of Twitter except for Uberfax. I follow Uberfax and quote <laughs> Uberfax all it's so the annoying. time. I <laughs> learned so much though. So a, I, mean, I learned You learn so something much. new every day. It's weird things. 20 times it's a day weird Uberfax. things. It's weird things I don't really want to know, but then I'm really and that we don't happy know. that I know. Okay. Right. But okay, but the show's called What the Flock. Yeah, right? okay. Okay. You're right. not cursing there. Yeah. Flock. 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 Like flock of flock. Geese birds. Of birds. Like, like a flock and of sheep. Flock of flock of sheep. I think guys maybe Jesus like the shepherd. Couldn't we have called it what the herd? What the herd? Yeah, herd of sheep. That's probably I don't know. Flock of sheep. So you're saying like Yeah, but like what, how is the flock, how is the church kind of moved towards culture? Well, I, I feel like... Some a, funny things. I feel, I feel, well, funny things. I walked into a, uh, a store the other day and just kind of like, they always try to put funny spins on words, funny spins on Christianity to make it more appealing. Yeah. So there was like this can of like mints and it was called Testaments. <laughs> I was like, oh no. Are you kidding me? Wow. <laughs> I was like, that's so I was like and the, well, I mean, they're marketing it to Christians, but I was like, yeah. okay, that's it. Yeah, good that's fun, guys. That was, that's that was great. But I feel like a lot of times the, the church tries to make things relevant to what's going on relevant. in pop culture. And, yeah. yeah. 
Uh, we'll talk about relevancy later. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but like, but uh, yeah, yeah, you, you know, you, yeah. You just, like yeah. you know how like everyone is just, all of us like food, right? Like that's a big <laughs> yes. thing of culture. Not me, just okay, well, name 20. one church you've been to recently that did not have food of any kind. Like I'm not gonna lie. Sometimes <gasps> I go to Spanish church. churches off the chain. After I know the service, they have donuts they have and coffee beans. all the time. And when I go Chicken. to a church that does not have donuts and coffee, I'm kind of like. Do I not mean that much? <laughs> <to the earth? laughs> I mean, like, I want to get spiritually filled, but like, you know. Yeah. Fill my well, they're like, there's, there's, there's a lot of hours. stuff that churches do, though. Like, I feel like in worship now, like, it's a big production. Yeah. yeah. It's more. It feels a lot of times. It feels more like a concert than it does like worship. Like wow. with the light yeah. shows. I mean, not yeah. every church for no, sure. Yeah, not no, every definitely. church, but like, there are some churches I walk into and I'm like. I don't Them understand. churches that got money, that's what we want. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You can afford all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what you're just saying. Like, it, it, when you walk into a church now, it's not it, It's not that, like, why? Well, I, I grew up in a small church. Yeah. And, like, the, you know, the pew chairs, we just got them. They were new. You know, we still sang out of a book and all that stuff. But now you walk oh. in, you've got, like, this huge stage, lights everywhere, smoke's coming from underneath your seat. Stop you're like, it. like, you know, like, Stop what's it. going on? What? Like a club? No. <laughs> Like a church. Oh. You know, like they pass the offering plate, it's oh. got like a debit card machine on it. Stop you know, it's it. Not that's not <laughs> true. <laughs> that's not true. That's not true. But it's a good idea. They actually do have those guys in, no, they in, don't. in lobbies of big churches. They have uh, yeah, an ATM. Like, yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. that's good. No, they have a tithing machine yeah. Yeah, where brilliant. you scan your card and you donate. And, and you can right from it can come out automatically every day. That's great. I think that's a little weird. I'm not making it. I don't know. I think that's weird. The first thing you see when you walk into a church is a tithing machine. Do you carry no, cash? I don't carry cash. Okay. Okay, do, now you're proving me wrong. Do you carry a wrong. checkbook? No. 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 No one does. It's 2012. I okay, think that's, that's, true. that's a, like stuff like that's okay. Like so they're just keeping makes, up with the times. Yeah. Of what we do. Okay. Doesn't that take yeah. the okay. personal? Like, yeah. I'm, no. I'm giving. It's, it's like you're my, just my, my bank account online giving. statements giving. I mean, not me. yeah. Siri took care of it for me. Start carrying a checkbook then, Start right? I can't. I can't carry a with checkbook. kitties on it. I have to have money in my bank account to use that. Kitty, a Hello Kitty checkbook. Yeah. For me, just Let's for me. get him one. Okay. I, I'm my birthday's coming present. up next year. Swag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, Sorry. what are some other things that like churches do that really mimics culture and like is not something that the church started, but like they literally grabbed it from culture and like do it now? Well, I definitely feel like there's kind of two different things we're trying to talk about here. There's like the church keeping up like with the times and then mm. keeping up with culture. I, I would say yeah, that true. that like using a debit card machine, just like that's like the most practical makes sense yeah. because yeah. we all carry debit cards. Mm -hmm. I don't carry cash really ever. Like I just think that makes the most sense. So like, like I think it's more like what are things that the church has like implemented into the church that aren't necessarily like necessary? Wow. Necessarily necessary. Like silly rules. Yeah, the, the, no, that are part of culture. Well, it's yeah. like now church is so cool now. Well, church is so cool now. Like, like I'm wearing ripped jeans. Like the pastors wear ripped jeans now. Like, and I went to a church before where like, if you weren't wearing a suit and tie, they would ask you to leave. And that's now you're like, now you're like, now you're, that's a little too much. But now yeah. like, I see people wearing stuff to church that I'm like, did you even have walked out of your house while you were wearing that? Are we allowed to wear that now? Like, I want to wear that. Yeah, I don't want to wear seen, that. I've seen people that are like gonna go to the beach. And they'd come in their bathing suit with the shirt over it and stuff. Oh, but is, wow. is that okay? <laughs> yeah, but I, then again, I live in Daytona Beach. Oh, so, yeah. Church is a little different. Yeah, that's okay. Beach. At least I know. Church was in I don't even really like have a problem with people's clothing that much when they come to church. Like, I think as long as yeah. they're at least there, they're there. Personally, I don't really care. Yeah. We get copy stuff. I think all there's the a time. lot of things. I, I, I think we've talked about some good things, but we're gonna come back to this here in okay. a second. All right. Awesome. We need to come back. But right now, we are gonna go to Ward on the Street with Taylor. <laughs> In today's culture, we put a lot of emphasis on trends. Some people consider themselves trendsetters, and others are trend followers. So I'm here today at Southeastern University to see how students feel about this subject. Do they follow trends, or do they think they set them? I'm Taylor Murray, and this is Word on the Street. Are you a trendsetter or are you a trend follower? You know, I don't think I'm cool enough to be setting the trends, but I think I'm too cool to follow them. Trendsetter. And why would you say you're a trendsetter? Because I set the trend. Is there a trend in particular that you believe you created and you set? Not yet, but I'm working on it. I would say I'm more of a trendsetter because I don't really like following, so I'd rather make my own like way. I would say I follow the trends, but then I make it my own. Cool. Is there any trend in particular that you have totally owned and made your own? 
Dresses, cardigans, and boots. Trendsetter. What trends do you set? Life. Life? Life trend. I would say I'm probably a trend follower. Why is that? Because I kind of go off what everyone else is doing. Mm. Like, for the most part. What about you? Are you a trendsetter? Look at my shoes. I definitely say you're a trendsetter. Is that the only trend you've ever set? Basically, yeah. Well, it's super cool. Have people followed it? Not yet. I mean, it's, it's, it's underground, you know. It's getting out there, but... It'll happen. It'll take time, yeah. I'm a trendsetter. What trends do you set? Uh, uh, everything. Jesus, clothes, home, I don't know. Okay, is there any trend right now that you're following? Uh, yeah. It's called the Jesus lifestyle. Well, whether you're a trend follower or a trendsetter, just remember that Christ set you apart. And no matter what trend you set or what trend you follow, you're unique in His eyes. Thank you, Taylor, so much for that awesome run on the that street. That was hilarious. That, that was, yeah. yeah. Like, what was that one guy? He was like saying, like, it was he getting weird. He trend sets Jesus. He Jesus <laughs> juked us. He's Jesus juked us. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus is out always here. a trend that can be set. That's funny. I, I, I hope so. Well, that's, that's what we're trying to do. Yeah. On, on the last panel, we, we talked about things that the church has done to, like, kind of accept culture a little bit more. Now, what are some things that are a little bit more controversial? Like, maybe, like, rap music, like, like, secular music, as Greg hates the term. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, in church. No, I hate the term What are some other things? Uh, well, I mean, I, well, you opened up with music, so I'm going to go ahead and say something about music. Like, just, music, I feel yeah. like a lot of times Christian music is just like, it's more of a turn off than it is a turn on. Like, I feel like there are artists that consider themselves Christian music artists that try to change their style or their genre to appeal to oh. non Christians. Oh. But yeah. because they're slamming this, like, message and they're saying, hey, we're Christian music, like, no one's going to listen to that. And I feel like it's a big turn off, but. Some artists, oh yeah, yeah, keep going, I, keep yeah, going. Yeah, all right. So, but some <laughs> artists now, like they are Christians, but if they don't put that Christian music placement on it, it's a little more acceptable to to non Christians. Okay. What are you heated up about now? Going based off what you said, because just coming to a Christian university, uh, I've been exposed to a lot of Christian artists, specifically rap artists, because I like Le rap right. music. Lecrae, not just him, but like some other guys that I've never even heard of in my life. I only know Lecrae. Um, and uh, there's a lot of songs that have came out you know recently uh, by rap artists secular rap artists or commercial guys that sure. um, have like you know a, a beat or a saying that's really catchy mm -hmm. and I've noticed a lot of Christian rappers they pretty much use the same beat or they change like one beat like different or they yeah. have the same yeah. kind of phrase the rhyme or whatever yeah. but they change it to Christian words and I hate that with a passion because I hear the song and I'm literally rapping the that original. one, the original yeah. version, yeah, 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 yeah. but it's supposed no. to be Christian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't think that's right. I think they should just be original, do their own thing, and stop trying to be biters and copying everybody else. Yeah, same here. I think that's cheesy. I don't know why, I just do. Yeah. <laughs> do you guys feel like the church is starting to look a little bit more like the world than ever, though? I, think, I mean, like, in a little bit more deeper things. I mean, like, like yeah. Christians, uh, like, culture has, like, infiltrated us. Okay, like, for instance, your legs are showing. 20 years ago, <laughs> 30 ankles, years ago, like, <laughs> sin, modesty, no, gone. Yeah. Cleavage, normal now. Because yeah. culture has made these Greg, things normal. Cleavage. Like, 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 modesty yeah. for, like, girls has kind of gone out the window for uh, the most part. I think there's, I think there's a difference between, between culture and, like, secularism, is to use a Christianese kind of word. I, like, culture is something defined by, like, the people who you live with, like where you live, where you're based off of. People, the culture yeah. of New York is different than the culture of Florida, which is different than the culture of LA. Mm -hmm. So I feel like there's trends and there's things that go with culture that have nothing to do with God at all. So I feel like there's a way to have a culture in the church and a culture in the world, but like I really don't yeah. think they should look too much different, but they do. And I think what Christianity tries to do is, is we're trying to copy or accept the culture of the world um, in, 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 in a wrong way, yourself. it's a different. It's a different. There's a there's a here thing. So I feel like the world doesn't want to accept Christian culture. But why is there this thing called Christian? But culture? you just said that you think that they should look the same. I feel like they should be a general. Yeah, it should be the same thing. Yeah. What what? Why is Christian culture different than culture culture? Like I understand what Greg is saying, and I understand what you're asking. Culture culture. And culture, if we culture. look at the church, like I mean, it's made up of a body of believers. Mm -hmm. And who are the believers? They're people. They're yeah. us. So it's like inevitable for us to stay the same for centuries and centuries and centuries. Yeah. Of course, like 
how Christians dress is going to change because we are humans and like the culture is changing around us. Yeah. So we are going to change with us. Like I, new innovations have come about. So um, the way our church services and productions are made, like it is going to change because we have media now. Like, yeah. you know, and those are and good I, things. I, I agree. Yeah. Change, but but I, I think I'm trying to step away from those things. I, I'm trying to talk about, you know, a lot of people say that uh, within the church, the, the divorce rates are just as high as in yeah. the world. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So like, n not, that's pretty serious. Yeah. And so like, like we have followed culture with that. So yeah. I don't Why? agree with that. I do not think it should be that way. No, of course. And it like upsets me that we follow culture so much into yeah. like those really deep issues. It's affecting our beliefs. It like, is. Kind of issues. It is. Things. Deep issues as in like um, the divorce rate is so high among Christians. Yeah. Like we should be set apart. We should be held to a different standard. Mm -hmm. Like we really should. And, and now some churches are like ordaining gay and lesbian ministers yeah. and that kind of thing because and that, they want to be so tolerant and yeah. accepting yeah. of everything yeah. to yeah. not hurt that's anyone's true. feelings. And that shouldn't be okay. And that's what I was thinking. I mean, I didn't say it, but... I was thinking while you guys were talking, I was thinking, I was like, you, you know, the church you know? is, yeah, the church is becoming more accepting. That's, yeah. I definitely yeah. agree yeah. with that. But is, isn't there a problem with that? Like, is there, is there a boundary line where like we become so accepting that we don't have any of our own standards anymore? Like, I feel like totally the big so. turnoff to, to, to non-Christians is the rules of Christianity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I feel like. Christian culture should reflect the fact that God gives you so much when you're a part of his kingdom. That yeah. like the, the the blessings of Christ are more than the than the condemnations of Christ. And yeah. so like like she was saying, like the divorce rate, like all, all these things that are going on, like mm -hmm. they're all surrounded in giving Christians like this negative thing. But yeah. uh, there's gotta be some kind of line where we say, Hey, Christ is welcoming of all. He loves you just I the agree. way you are. So he's asking you he's providing you a way to live a blessed life not a rule filled you know culturally dynamic life away but, from your normal yeah. but i definitely think to. jesus calls us to change yeah like we say jesus loves us just the way we are but like i think jesus loves us but he doesn't want to leave us the way we are so like yeah. that's true so yeah sure he loves you the way you are but he wouldn't leave you that way so yeah. like thank like, god yeah, like, yeah thank god, god. i'm not right? the same way but like <laughs> I, I just think like like christians have kind of just like let go of like the idea of holiness yeah. in, in any way of, of going through the process of sanctification, of, of living a righteous life. I, I mean, like, yeah. I know few Christians who are still virgins. They're not married. Like, like that's a big deal. Yeah. But yeah. our culture has kind of made that not a big deal. Yeah. There's lots of sin issues that we have, like, adopted from culture. I feel like yeah. it's because we, we want to feel more accepted by the worldly culture than the Christian culture. Like we go, hey, most of my friends, the people like that's going on in society is, is this Christian cult, this non-Christian culture. And I f feel like more, I want to be accepted by them more than Christian because God accepts everybody. So like we try to f straddle the boundary line mm -hmm. so much that like you said, purity goes out the window, holiness yeah. goes out the window. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a really wow. good point. And we're going to keep talking about that. But right now we're going to go to Greg and Angie with the top three. <laughs> Hello and welcome to your top 10 flocks that Jesus did not follow. Starting off at number 10, individual cups. Did you share a cup with me, guys? Not with that lipstick on. Number 9, T-Bowing. Ain't bow down for nobody else. <laughs> <to go. laughs> number 8, the temple market. He really flipped out. Ooh, turned some tables, too. Number 7, using public transportation. Hey, you got two feet. Number 6, stoning. Yeah, he ain't about that. That really hurts. <laughs> Number five, swimming. Why swim when you can just walk on water? True. Number four, closed-toed shoes. Yeah, I, I really like sandals too. Even though you got a hole in your shoe. I do right? really. Number three, shaving. Keep that beard growing. True. And number two, washing your own feet. Who does that? <laughs> God. And the number one flock that Jesus did not follow, running out of wine. Keep the party going, bro. <laughs> this is your top ten. Back to the <laughs> In this, joke. in this whole conversation that we've been having, I think none of us have mentioned it yet, but I think a big thing that we think of is being in the world, but not out of the world. Yeah. And Which is we, not a Bible verse. I was going to say that. Okay. You stole it. Just making sure we everyone literally knows. Got it's, in the not, Bible. it's not a Bible I verse. Those, it was, le those legitimate not, words are not written. That phrase is not in the Bible. There's several verses that talk about um, not conforming to the world and not like that kind of thing, but yeah. it does not say be in the world, but not of it. 
That is a total Christian made phrase. I thought it was. It's not. It's a Christianese phrase. We so, should have put it in the text. That's a good point. I feel like it's a good point, whoever came up with it. not really in Proverbs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think people like are like quoting it like Jesus said. Yeah. Jesus said, in the red the letter. Of the world. It's a um, biblical truth. But it's truth, yeah. though. Biblical truth. Why do people yeah. say that, though? Does it have some importance? Well, because that's yeah. what Jesus was. Yeah. I mean, Jesus was, you know, a human divine in the world, but he was not of the world. Exactly. He, he showed good us example. that. Good example. Yeah. I use Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> so, like, guys, <laughs> uh, so, guys, how do you think we can, we as Christians, can influence culture? Because we've been talking about how much culture influences yeah. us. Yeah. yeah. But what can we do to influence? We culture? Christians, we got power. Amen. I've got the power. Preach it. So, yeah, I think, whatever. like, we talk about this all the time, mm -hmm. but I mean, it's a matter of like deciding that you're going to stick up for what you believe in. Yeah. Um, yeah. Being bold. It being bold. Faith. We've had an episode on that. Like mm -hmm. it really is deciding that every morning you wake up believing in what you believe in and being like, and not being swayed because people yeah. are going to yeah. try and change your opinion all time. the time. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Something huge for me, like um, since I want to be an actress and want to be, in, I feel like called to Hollywood and do that, like celebrities have so much influence over what yeah. we do and think and That's say true. and act and Scientology is like their main religion, which is just absolute insanity. Yeah. Like if you can get actual like Christians to be in LA and influence movies and television and fashion and all of that, yeah. Yeah. that would completely change our culture. Yeah. Yeah. What does it, it would really change everything. look like to do that? Well, what does it look like for Christians that actually affect culture? It ain't gonna be easy. No, no. I think no. it just I think it just takes people to step out in faith and to find their calling and their mission and to go out into it. Because I feel like everybody thinks a missionary or a ministry is something from Christian to Christian. When really we're called to be disciples to go out mm -hmm. into the world, like in the end of Matthew, like to go out and to be Jesus to other people. I mean, most of the time Jesus was talking to to non Christians or non you know believers in God. Yeah. So so yeah. a lot of the times like we're supposed to call to go do it. Like just case in point, being an actress, that's not a ministry opportunity as seen by most Christians, yeah. but yeah, it is. That's like, we, people need Jesus that don't know him more than the people that already do. Yeah. Well, I, like I agree with you. I, I think if the if all Christians were just freaking Christians, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like if we were actually yeah. all Christians yeah. and we were actually all taking up Jesus's command to like make yeah. disciples and to go out into all the world and make disciples, yeah. then maybe we would begin to affect culture. But I think we care a little bit too much about being cool, yeah. about looking so good, about sounding politically correct. And that's something yeah. you're gonna have to get over. Like if that's something I think about all the time. If I actually want to move to LA where I know 99.9% .9 of the people are going to think I'm a They're hateful gonna judge person because right yeah. I disagree yeah. with them. Mm -hmm. Like that's something I'm gonna have to get over. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. I think all Christians are gonna have to get over that fear of being judged or yeah. like you looked down to. on. But I, yeah, I, but I sure. feel like that, like, it, uh, we try to appeal to people to say, well, we're not really like that. We're like this. We're like you guys. It's been, like the seeker sensitive movement. Like we're we're really. Yeah. What's a seeker sensitive movement? Like when churches <laughs> adapt to society and make it more enjoyable oh, for okay. people who are non Christian so that they come in and get saved. Gotcha. And yeah. then their numbers grow. But after that, there really isn't much mm -hmm. depth anymore. So I feel like, like you said, what does it look like? It, it, it takes people being relational. It takes, mm -hmm. it takes, it takes the Jesus inside of you to be relational with somebody, to stand next to them in your everyday routine, actress, you know, account. Counting, whatever. I pointed you. I don't know what <laughs> sports, yeah. sports, yeah. sports casting, yeah. sports casting, yeah. sports yeah. casting, yeah. like ministry opportunities, yeah. like anything that we're doing, like to be alongside of non-Christians and to show them, hey, hey, we're just trying to be the face of Jesus yeah. to the world. We're not trying to condemn anybody. Yeah. And the real Jesus, not the concept. That exactly, not the concept of Jesus, but the real so Jesus. True. Yeah. I think we also just need to like always be on point. And I, I know we make mistakes, but. Always be truthful and always be on point because if you are going to be in the public, mm -hmm. then you've got to realize, mean, okay, someone is always watching you. So oh, in yeah. the way that you dress and the way that you conduct yourself, it's important to be on point. I don't know what your pet peeve is, but like I actually have a pet peeve when I see so many people um, in, in in like Hollywood in a secular industry, and um, they're such nice people and everything, but they never mention the name of Jesus. Yeah. But they are Christians. Yeah. And so you find out years yeah. down the road that they're Christians. Oh, they're Christians? Mm -hmm. Oh, you're huh. Christian? Oh, that makes sense why you're nice. But the same oh. thing, like, wouldn't it be such a ministry if they mentioned the name of Jesus in cool. their walk? I, I just think know, that's a good know, way to affect know, culture. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe you, Taylor. Yeah. <laughs> but her name's Megan Good, right? She's an actress. And she, uh, you know who she is? No, I don't. I, I don't know who she is either. But she's in a lot of good movies, right? But she's always playing the movie. I like to say the movie. Uh, okay, I can't use this word. The movie. Uh, 
she's the very scandalous, promiscuous uh, one, right? Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Come to find out, she claims to be a woman of God. See, that's yeah. confusing. Yeah. And she's like, yeah. you know, and I'm just like, Psh, stop pointing. Well, that yeah. can get me on a whole other conversation. Yeah, we, we can talk about that. Talk you know? about, <laughs> I feel like there's a way, there is a way, and there are Christians out there living every day in society, adapting to culture, being a part of the culture of humanity. We're yeah. all one big culture, but standing for what's right on what's right. Like taking yeah. what the Bible says, what Jesus taught, and saying, hey, this is where my yeah. culture does not line up with this. I agree. So this yeah. is where I'm going to say, hey, that is not going to be a part of my personal culture, but this is how I'm going to live my life, yeah. and this is how God called me agree. to live my life. Wow, yeah. that's good. I definitely think us Christians have conformed way too much to the world. And the answer is not to try to win people by our coolness, yeah. not to try to win people by our wise words, that's what Paul yeah. says, or our persuasive speech, yeah. but, but the power of God. Mm -hmm. And I think the only answer to changing culture is God changing culture through us. So, cool. Awesome. Well, we're going to go to Food for Thought with the Chelsea Webb. The Yay. Chelsea I'm hungry, <laughs> Chelsea. <laughs> In modern day society, culture is defined as the attitudes, goals, and values that we share with those around us. But when it comes to being a Christian, it seems like we have gotten so focused on fitting in with the world that we've completely forgotten what it means to stand out. And why is this? I mean, remember, we're called to be set apart. So what changes could you make in your life in order to be a better example and a better light? Think about it. I'm Chelsea Webb, and that's your Food for Thought. <laughs> All right, well, we've definitely had a lot of good conversation tonight, thrown around a lot of ideas. Yeah. But right now, we're going to go to the Word to see what it has to say about conforming. In Romans 12, 2, it says, Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, mm. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Do not conform to the pattern of this world. Then you'll be able to know God's will. You know, I think all of us, in some way, shape, or form, has definitely conformed to the pattern of the world. I mean, obviously Christian culture has not affected American culture very much. Obviously, the American culture has infiltrated our churches a little bit more than we have infiltrated the world. So maybe the answer tonight is on an individual basis. I know I, in many ways, have conformed to this world more than I've affected the world. And I think a lot of you would probably agree. So I wanna pray with you tonight. I wanna pray for myself and I wanna pray for you. And I just believe that the Lord wants to use you to affect culture and to change the world. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to talk about you. God, I pray that you would empower us by your spirit to change the world, God. I, I pray that we would no longer conform, that we would check our hearts and that you would light up those areas in our life that are full of darkness, Father. We praise you and we thank you for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Cool. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. If you have a question, a comment, or a suggestion, please tweet us or send us a message on Facebook. And as always, don't forget to live, live it raw. raw.